Over the years, Las Vegas has had a pretty rough roller coaster history. From the Big Apple Coaster to MGM Grand Adventures and even the offerings at Circus Circus. In the year 2000, the best roller coaster in Vegas opened. A 70 miles per hour launched attraction that would open at the Sahara Hotel. 11 years later, it ended up abandoned outside for nearly just as long. New century, new thrills. It's about height, it's about airtime, and you got it, it's about speed. The Sahara Hotel and Casino, located on the Vegas Strip, opened in October 1952. With 240 rooms on 19 acres of land, the $5.5 million African Sahara theme resort was decorated with life-size camels. Originally, the resort was just two stories that had motel-style wings surrounding a pool. Nearly right away, the property became so popular it needed to expand, and just a year after opening, a further 200 rooms were planned to be added. Again, just seven years after opening the resort, they were planning to add a 14-story Sahara Tower opening in 1960. This added a further 204 rooms, taking the new total to 604. This new tower was the tallest building in Nevada at the time. Throughout the next three decades, more and more rooms would continue to be added. In 1988, a 26-story tower was added to bring the total rooms to 1,500. With new owners came new renovations, and in 1995, the biggest yet would occur. $100 million was invested that would cover bars, restaurants, rooms, and the swimming pools. Housekeeping. It's four o'clock. Four o'clock! Woo! You know what that means? It's time for the six ninety-nine Sahara buffet. Woo! Hey, six ninety-nine buffet! Yeah, six ninety-nine buffet! Woo! It must be four o'clock. Just six ninety-nine with your Club Sahara card, Italian, Mexican wow. food, and a live carving station from four p.m. That's good. I love you, brother. These would aim to be completed by the year two thousand now offering 1,720 rooms, a 50,000 square foot larger casino, and the NASCAR Cafe. Said to be inspired by the success of Planet Hollywood, Hard Rock Cafe, and the popular ESPN Zone, Daytona-based racing company NASCAR planned to open 10 restaurants within five years. The first NASCAR Cafe was located at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, opening in 1996. The second would be a $5 million restaurant located at Universal Studios Florida's new high-traffic area, City Wall, in 1998. This was part of a $3 billion overhaul that included the new theme park, Islands of Adventure. In fact, each of the 10 new planned NASCAR cafes would be budgeted between $4 and $6 million per site. Each cafe would include surround sound TVs, electronic game stations with simulators, and actual NASCAR stock cars. Along with the cars, there were sponsors, uniforms, trophies, and videos from all eras of NASCAR. Each of them was filled with pure NASCAR. The menus would be the normal touristy food with unique NASCAR names. Your meal ended with servers asking if they could remove the flat tire out of your way, i.e. can I take your empty plate? See, pure NASCAR. Other than the two opening day announced locations, NASCAR cafes would open up in Greensboro, North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains, and Nashville. Most of these were nearly exactly the same, except for one, the NASCAR Cafe at the Sahara. Thousands of NASCAR fans turned up on opening day, March 2, 2000, the same weekend as the Samstown 300 NASCAR race event for this brand new racing experience. The attraction was inaugurated with a who's who of NASCAR drivers, including former Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallen, reigning champion Dale Jarrett, and many, many more. Located within the Sahara Hotel and Casino, this NASCAR cafe cost $50 million, which for that price included the cafe, the racing-themed casino, and more. 
This 400 seat, 75,000 square foot cafe also featured a 24 stock car racing simulator, a state of the art arcade, signed walls throughout from the list of drivers, many who were there at the opening, a three ton replica of the Pontiac race car named Carzilla, which was billed as the largest stock car in the world, along with nearly 20 full size stock cars on display throughout the venue. I came to Las Vegas, Nevada to take on the B3, the big badass burrito challenge at the NASCAR cafe in the historic Sahara Hotel and Casino. Oh, and it also included a pretty major roller coaster, Speed the Ride. This indoor outdoor roller coaster would reach speeds of 70 miles per hour starting in the restaurant. We go zero to 45 in under two seconds. And just like the Sahara, Speed the Ride is unforgettable. The ride had to be approved by both the county planners and the Department of Aviation due to the huge 244 foot tall spike. This Ally M shuttle loop coaster itself would cost $7 million to create. Baltimore based Premier Rides was selected to design the 1,400 foot long roller coaster, and still fabrication was completed by Intermounted Lift. LIM, or Linear Induction Motor Launches, use a form of electromagnetic propulsion containing no moving parts by using magnets. The first use of LIM launches was in 1996 on Flight of Fear at both Kings Island and Kings Dominion. Premier would again use this on a shuttle coaster for the first time with Mr. Freeze in 1998, which the two Mr. Freezes are the only other LIM shuttle loop coasters in the world. LIM was later superseded by the now more common LSM launches. Speed the Ride was announced in 1999, and it was planned to be built and ready in time for the restaurant's opening. It did suffer a small delay though, and open on April 28, a few weeks after the restaurant. The ride begins with a high-speed launch from the station that reaches 0 to 45 miles per hour in 2 seconds, straight out of the NASCAR cafe and into an underground tunnel. This tunnel is 15 feet below the surface and takes the train straight out onto Sahara Avenue and into a 92 foot tall vertical loop. A second LIM launch takes the cars from 45 to 70 miles per hour again in two seconds, followed by high speed turns and through the 190 foot tall Sahara Marquee before heading up that now iconic spike. After reaching the top, the train rolls back dropping backwards down the 224 foot drop of the spike and doing the course all again backwards. Jim Say, president of Premier Rides, stated that racing car fans and adrenaline junkies will love it. Speed the Ride at Sahara Hotel and Casino is one of the hottest tickets at one of the oldest casinos on the Strip. First opened in 1952 and crowned the sixth jewel of the Strip, the Sahara was and still remains an oasis for outrageous fun. I'm still, I'm still shaking and I left half my stomach on that zero G thing at the end. Each ride would cost $6 opening year and went up to $10 in later years with an all-day pass costing $22.95. After opening, one of the first groups to ride were 24 Elvis Presley impersonators, known as the Flying Alvy. Adrenaline rush is great. Just ride as good as jumping out of a plane. I love it. I want to do it again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Though the ride was definitely the best roller coaster in Vegas during its time, its time in Vegas was rather short. In 2008, rumors began to circulate that speed would be removed due to the owners of the resort wanting to once again renovate the hotel. Its purpose outside to try and bring more people into the casino was no longer working. Not long after opening to save money, they started limiting the launches per hour to save on power consumption. Sometimes you had to wait quite some time to take a ride, with only one train launching every 15 minutes. The once used fog machine covering the ride's tunnel and launch was also no longer in effect. The rumors were not true though, and after a short closure, the ride remained in place and reopened it in 2009. Sadly, its days were indeed numbered. And it's last call for the legendary Sahara Casino in Las Vegas. Today, after nearly 60 years, it's closing its doors forever. On March 11, 2011, Las Vegas News reported that the Sahara Hotel would be closing, with no plans to reopen in the foreseeable future. 
The new owners who took over in 2007 had decided that it was no longer economically viable to keep the casino and hotel open on the north side of the strip. Over the later years, the resort had become more and more run down. It didn't do enough to keep up with the booming resorts all around it. Over 1,000 employees would be affected by the closure, and all hotel reservations would be cancelled. With the closure came the end of Speed the Ride, finally closing on May 1st, 2011, with the rest of the resort following on May 16th, 2011, marking the end of its 58-year operation. Everything inside was sold, the largest liquidation sale in Las Vegas history. The NASCAR items were exempt from the sale. The fate of the ride was uncertain. Stories ranged from it being melted down to that Six Flags had bought it. Eventually, it was sold and dismantled in April 2012, and plans were formed for its return. This time, three miles away, on the south end of the strip, at Akita Plaza. Working with Premier Rides, the coaster would be relocated and reused as much as possible, with the midsection being redesigned to work within and over the existing site. This would add new exciting curves and bends to the ride. After it was taken down, it was moved to a lot across from Mandalay Bay, waiting to be installed at its new home. The whole area for the new ride has quite a troubled history. Sky View is going to be a 500 foot high observation wheel be the third largest in the Western Hemisphere, and it'll be taller than the Mandalay Bay. Um, it's 50 feet taller than the Mandalay Bay, but our gondolas will actually be 100 feet higher than the foundation room. So it's going to be a spectacular view of the Las Vegas Strip. Just, just look at this view. Right next door was to be the Sky View Super Wheel, a 500-foot Ferris wheel that began construction but was never finished, with only the support column standing before being cancelled. And just like this cancelled project, Akita Plaza would never be. In 2014, the Sahara Resort was converted to the SLS Las Vegas, before in 2019 being rebranded once again as the Sahara Las Vegas. Another Las Vegas resort is changing its name, but this one's mm -hmm. kind of retro, yeah. right, Nate? The SLS is rebranding to the Sahara Las Vegas. Yeah, that, I think that name might stick. It's, it's going a little familiar. <laughs> Along with a grand ceremony and subtle references to the original resort. Over the six decades the original was open, Alvis had stayed there filming Viva Las Vegas, the Beatles had stayed there, it was a frequent favorite place of the Rat Pack, and the 1960 film Ocean's Eleven was filmed there. It, however, became ran down and failed to continue its legacy. Both the supports for the Skyview and the dismantled Speed the Ride would remain sitting abandoned in their lots for the foreseeable future, rusting away. The lot was put up for auction in 2019, with the track likely being sold for scrap. Speed the Ride spent nearly as much of its life sat by the side of the road abandoned, nine years after the ride was closed. When the owners were asked if Speed the Ride would return to the new, rebranded Sahara in 2019, they replied that it was a Sahara of a different era. While the ride only lasted 45 seconds, it packed a punch. As one of the few LIM shuttle loop coasters in the world, Speed the Ride was once the best roller coaster in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Let me know in the comments below where you would like to see covered next. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes, and a special thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.